and says, which podcast? So it's a uh, podcast from Rich Dad Radio Show. So what we do is um, I take uh, a podcast that I listen to from, uh, from Robert. I break it down and we use it to, uh, to discuss um, in, our, in some of our webinars. So this one is about find out how entrepreneurs succeed. And in this uh, particular podcast, Robert and Kim interview two uh, entrepreneurs out of the U.S., one guy called Aaron who has a company called Gadzooks, Enchiladas and Soup, and another guy called JT who has a business called Tough to Needle, which is uh, uh, manufacturing and distributing mattresses. So I'm just going to I'm going to pick out some of the lessons that uh, that I heard them sort of uh, bring up, and as we're going through them, why don't you guys comment, ask questions? And, uh, and we can make this as interactive as we can. So, right up front, follow, when you have an idea, follow it. So, uh, uh, you know, one of the first things that I took out of that was, you know, when, when he talks to Aaron, Aaron says, you know, he had an idea, had an idea in college, and he kept thinking about it. He kept uh, putting, it, putting it down, and it takes time. So with that idea, what he said is the most important thing that he learned getting going was why should you or why do you exist? So the question to you guys on this call now is, are you clear why you exist? Why your business exists? Why your product or your service exists? What does it do? How does it differentiate itself? Any questions or comments around that? So it's a great question to, to ask yourself. Why do you exist? Why does your business exist? Why does your product exist? Why does your service exist? And, um, and how does it differentiate? So next thing I picked up from him was around money. So Aaron talks about having to create working capital. And JT talked about starting with absolutely nothing. So let's read the uh, deal on these comments here quick. So um, McCreet says, yes, to help and make a difference to others. Okay, good. So. What does that mean, Makrit? When, when, uh, when you're an accountant, you're an accounting firm, so how, how do you differentiate yourself from others? What is, the, what is the real differentiating piece that makes you different from others when you, uh, when you pursue your desire to help and make a difference to others? You know, are you really clear on, are you really clear on that? Because the more clarity we, we get, the better it is. Yeah, for, for hi, Barry. <laughs> Sorry, I've unmuted. Can you hear me? I can. Great. Cool. Cool stuff. Um, yes, for me, the real difference, uh, what, what I can't see myself, is a bit weird talking to a black screen. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, to, for me to make a difference in, in my clients' lives and other people's lives is to empower them as a small business to, to educate them and empower them and help them to um, make business decisions and make the right business decisions based on current financial info and to put the power back in their hands and not having to wait for an accountant giving information like a month or a year down the line. That's, that's a big thing what I found with small businesses and entrepreneurs especially. So, okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, to, to put the power back in their hands. Excellent. Thank you for that. Great. So Gunther says Thanks. to serve others by allowing people with, uh, with nothing to change their lives. So, Gunter, what does that mean in, in respect to your business? What, what does that mean? 
Well, it's about transfer of skills. Okay. There's so many people so, in South Africa that are unemployed. And the reason they're really unemployed is because they failed to skill themselves over the last 20 years. Because we are now in an information and technology age. And okay. so these skills can be passed on by my company free of charge to people. So okay, so how do you, bring, how really do you differentiate skills. yourself? Because I transfer these skills without charging them. And they earn a commission while they learn how the skill. How do you skill. differentiate yourself, Kinte? How do I? Differentiate yourself. What well, makes you different what, to you? Well, I don't know. Do what other company is doing that? Transferring skills to people that don't have money. And so paying them at the same time. And paying them? Yes. Okay. So, so you have a free transfer of skills and you pay them to learn? Yes, but it's work. I mean, they've got to do something for it. It's, you know, in okay, life, there's actually nothing that's free. Okay, great. So by the sound of it, you're pretty clear on how you differentiate yourself and what you do. Yes, absolutely. Excellent. So Delian says, for her, she's pretty clear, is to help entrepreneurs find more of the right customers and connect with these customers. Excellent. Okay, good. So, yeah, that, that, so that first bit around, uh, around really understanding why you do what you do, why do you exist, and how do you differentiate yourself. That's an area that I often see that many people miss, or they don't have a lot of clarity around that. So, the other thing that came up that I picked up was this. That the word naivety, very often when people start up a business, people get into a business, they are very naive. They think they think they know what they think they know. And the one thing that either stops them from moving forward or stops them from moving in the right direction is they think they have to know too much. So when you listen to both Aaron and JT, they didn't. They didn't spend hours and hours and hours trying to uncover what they needed to know. What they did is they took action. Too many entrepreneurs are sitting back and not taking action. How many of you could connect with that? How many of you are? How many of you get stuck because you're waiting to know everything? You're waiting to know that if it's going to succeed, you're waiting to know if it's going to work, if it's going to be right, if that's the right thing. So. Just by a show of hands or comments, how many of you um, how many of you know that that to be true at times, either right now in your business or in the past in your business? So Karun. Okay, excellent. The next one was this, and, and I really love this because I truly believe that and, uh, when I go back to Gunther, this is along Gunther's lines. I truly believe that the job of an entrepreneur is to solve problems. And, um, and when we focus on solving problems, it allows us to be able to grow our business. You know, um, often you'll hear me say the, the art of entrepreneurship is finding problems, creating a solution and being able to monetize that solution. So, um, so when you listen to the story from JT, that's what he talks about. He says, what they did is they sat down and they just listed all the problems that people had around buying mattresses. Once they had all the problems that they could think of, they went about finding a solution. And for me, that was, that was very powerful is how do you, how do you solve what are the problems that you're solving? So when I hear Gunter talking, his, his problem that he's solving is, is providing education, skills, and knowledge to people that can't afford it to be able to upskill them. So what problems do you solve? Delian, helping entrepreneurs find customers and create more clarity on, uh, on their customer base. So when you're doing what you're doing, I believe that the key thought that you should be having is right now, what problem am I solving? 
when you're in a discussion with anyone, when you are in a sales discussion, whatever that is, what are you out there focused on solving problems? Okay, any comments or questions around the art of solving problems? How many of you realize that the one thing we don't have a problem with on, in this world is problems? Yet many people struggle to make money because they're not identifying problems. So, any other questions or comments on that? So, McCreer says, totally agree. You know, in accounting, you know, what problems are, when you're sitting there and you're providing an accounting service, what problems are you providing to your clients? You know, as the, any of you that came to the event that, uh, that I hosted with Robert Kiyosaki, um, the, one of the biggest problems is that many small to medium-sized business owners don't have bookkeepers or accountants. That's a problem. So can you connect the problem to your solution and get people to understand that problem? Any other questions or comments on that? Um, Barry, um, I, when, after, after listening to that, it actually helped me to clarify a lot more in terms of what I did, because actually I was speaking to a friend, and um, especially in the direction we want to go next year, um, and obviously play a bigger game, etc. cetera, um, some of the things was like trying to build clarity, and one of those things that, that it helped me just slow mine down in terms of like helping business owners dominate the niche and become digital authorities. Um, and yeah, I thought maybe let me throw that out and see, have that talk, like sort of pulled apart and see if it, if, it, if it fits into what we've been talking about now. Yeah, so, so if you want to become creative, what, so what's the niche that you want to create? So that's got to, yeah, that's got to be the question. So Tuft and Needle, if, if, you, if you look at the Tuft and Needle example, they created a niche. What did they go after? So they, what they went after is they went after greedy man, uh, mattress sales guys. There was fat margins. There, there was a traditional way of doing business. It was very uh, cumbersome to get to buy mattresses. And they went after that. So what they did is, is they found, they created a niche by finding problems that people were unhappy with, and they went after those problems. 100%. So in, in your context, Part of what you've got to think of, Marlon, is what is the niche that, uh, what, is, what are the key problems? So yeah, I would just suggest you could do what, what, what JT did, is you could just sit and list all the problems that your target market has. So if your target market is small to medium-sized businesses, what problems do they encounter when it comes to leveraging uh, technology? And that could be in various areas, and you've got to decide what area you specialize in, yep. Yes, yes. thank you. Is this, is this making sense to everybody? So I think one of the things is too many people get too broad. They think they can do everything, they try and do everything, and they end up doing nothing. So show of hands, how many of you can connect with that? I, I, I've been through that in my journey in business. And, um, and one of the best things I did is I narrowed it down and I went, okay, sort of seven, eight years ago, narrowed it down, said, what do I do? Right, I teach sales. I focused on teaching sales, teaching people how to generate income. As I, as I did that, slowly I widened my scope. Today, uh, you know, a decade later, my, my offering is very wide. I have a different team, but within all those things, we solve a series of problems. So, so it got narrow right in the beginning and focused on one key thing. So, so, so get clear on, on that, on, on solving that problem. What do you know, what do people hate? What do they not like? What makes them get angry? You know, I, I think about it. If like, if, if I ever went into takeover or run a bank, for example, I mean, I could, how many of you are like me? 
as an entrepreneur, as a small business owner, you could make flipping pages and pages of notes about the things that you hate about your bank. Now, if, if that was me, I could make that whole list. Then I'd go in and say, right, how am I going to offer this to the market in a different way so that I can, so that I can uh, differentiate myself? How many of you, uh, how many of you connect with, with what I've just said there? Okay, good. So, uh, so solving problems. The, the other thing, uh, let's have a look. Michael says, uh, Michael, Michael, where is he? Uh, Michael, I saw a message. I, for some reason, can't see it. I'm sure it'll come up. Okay, so um, Michael, do you want to do you want to open your mic and tell me what comment you have? So I don't mind reading it if you can't see it there, Barry. Thanks. I can't for whatever reason. But anyway, this is hi, Barry. Hi, and everyone. Um, my my question is: I'm battling with digital marketing which is becoming more popular today. Do I learn the digital stuff or do I hire a young techie to help me? Well, so that is, that's a great question, Michael. Uh, what do you want to do? You know, for me, it's pretty simple. Uh, Marlon is my digital guy. I hire Marlon. Why? Because I have no interest in learning that. Two, I don't have the time. Uh, and, uh, and I want to focus my time, effort, and energy in the areas that generate me income. And that is, that's teaching, that's learning, that's mastering my craft, that's building teachers and trainers. That's where I will get the absolute best results. So um, it, I'd liken it to this. I'm not an accountant. Why would I want to learn to become an accountant or a bookkeeper to do my own books and accounts in my business? What I would want to get is a little bit of knowledge on the, on the general application of accounting and become financially literate so I, so i am i am financially literate but i don't want to do all i don't want to do the day to day numbers because that takes me away from what i'm really good at doing now the problem with many small to medium sized businesses is they try to do everything themselves because they think it's going to be cheaper and save them a lot of money and uh, just work out you know if if you spent had to spend an hour a day doing all your Facebook posts and all social media and learning all that sort of stuff and making mistakes. Um, if in the next year, the next uh, 54 weeks you are, uh, you spent at just, even if it's an hour a week doing that, that's 54 hours. That's 54 hours. That's seven or eight days. That's a whole week out. How much money could you make if you took that whole week and just focused it on what you're really good at doing and, uh, and, and by bringing somebody in, who specializes. Now, sometimes it could be a young techie. When I hear the word young techie, well, it's just my little voice comes up saying, well, what I'm doing is I'm looking for someone who's cheap. Don't have to pay him very much. Well, it, it all depends what you want. What, what, what I want right now is I, I want a team of people, one, who are prepared to learn, but two, in my environment, they, they've, got to have, they've got to have business experience and business acumen. So that's why I work with Mullen. Um, so, so there's a number of ways you can do it. One, yes, you can go do it yourself and you can, uh, you can learn and all that if that's really what you want to do or you can outsource it. Now, who do you outsource it to? Well, I've just, I've learned that very often I've outsourced it based on what I thought I could afford and it cost me way more. Now what I do, my brain works like this, I outsource to the people that can do the job that I need and, uh, and I find a way to fund it. Does, Michael, does that make sense? And Barry, if I could add to that, I mean, I think, and especially being on this journey with you, um, there, there's, there's, you, you mentioned something very important there the last little bit in terms of being fairly clear in terms of what you want that person to achieve or what that person should fulfill for you. Um, yeah. And then, and with that clarity, it allows 
it allows it allows me to have a bit more direction because there's many times that you're course correcting whatever we're doing um, from a from an overview point of view without knowing the technical aspect to it. So I think that's yeah. a major part um, to 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 having to to having to outsource. No matter what you outsource, is like you need to have a very clear overview of what that's supposed, what that end result sort of looks like, and then you outsource it without without just sort of to totally like letting go and abdicating from it. Because a lot of people yeah. tend to do that, like, because I give it to you, oh, you just sort that out, you know, instead of, but you like, as you're doing it, you're guiding the person along the way to, to, to maintain the context. Yeah, so do I know what you guys are doing all the time, Marlon? No. So I, so I don't know what you guys are doing, as in what you're doing in your, in, 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 in social media for me, oh. but I've got a, outside, of, outside of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, I've got a pretty good handle on what's going up, don't I? Exactly, exactly, you know, exactly. Not like the technical, technical bits, but you know, you know the broad strokes of like, this is the end result. This 100%. Is, yeah, 100%. So do I, do I care for the technical bits? Not at all. <laughs> no, I, I, for me, it's pretty simple. Marlon, I don't care. I'm not interested. This is what we need. How are you going to get it done? So, so that's on the one side. The other side is, is regularly I'll send Marlon a message. Marlon, you did a Facebook post. I don't like the context. Please make sure we don't do that again. Or so it, and we build context around monitoring that. So I have a very good general idea of what's going on when it goes social media wise. I know what, I know what our, what our, uh, what our plan is. I know what the message is. But how it gets done, how they send emails, all that sort of stuff, frankly, I don't care. And I'm not going to take my brain, my effort, and my energy there either. Would you, uh, would you concur with that, Molly? 100%. 100%. And it, it, it allows me to grow. And at the same time, it allows, um, it allows us to find, your, to find exactly the tone that we need to put for the business that, that, that works for the business. Yeah, and, and in, in, in context speaking, uh, I don't expect you to know how I run seminars, but I expect you to know what happens in my seminars. Yes? 100%. 100%. You, the, those are key things. Yeah, part of our agreement is you have to attend all my seminars, don't you? Yes. And you pay for them? Yes. Okay, so, so that's, that's just our agreement. Why? Because if Marlon's going to run... If Marlon is going to, going to run all my social media and be the guy behind doing that whole outsource, he's got to understand the context of what I teach. You know, we get it all the time. So have people will phone Nicole or phone me and say, hey, I, I can do much better on social media than, than, than what you guys are doing. You know, I, I'll send you a quote. I go, sure, no problem, but this is the deal. I've got an event coming up in two weeks' time. Uh, before we do any business, please come on that event. I never see people like that's just my commitment. So, you know, why do I say that? Because Michael, if you're going to outsource, well, the commitment you want to get from someone who's outsourcing is that they come into your business and understand it. They spend some time. I would do the same. Um, my accountant, my accountant, my agreement with her right in the beginning when I started with her, uh, she's a new accountant of mine uh, last year was that she would attend all my programs. She's attended every program. Because, so she has the context of what we do so that when we're sitting around the table every month discussing my numbers, she knows where the money comes from. Too many accountants, and Makrit, you, 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 you might be able to wade wait, wait in on this, but too many accountants understand the job of accounting, but they don't understand their client's business. It sounds a little bit like flipping bankers. So Michael, yeah. do you outsource or do you employ? Sorry, Makrit, let me answer Michael's question there. Michael, you said, do you outsource or do you employ? That all depends on the strategy of your business. Uh, it, it depends on the strategy. It depends on what you want. It depends on, on how you do it. You employ someone. Um, there, there's, there's positives and negatives to, to all of them. You know, personally, I don't employ a lot of people. I, I outsource and partner with people because that's just my preference. I don't, I don't want to manage employees. But if that's what you want to do, then, then same thing. You've still got to be clear on what you want to create, 
what their, their expectation is and how they're going to do it. So either way, the problem with, with uh, most of those agreements with many people is people go and outsource or they employ and they don't have clarity on where they're going. Like Marlon said, it's like, oh, good. Yeah, you go do the stuff for me and then we abdicate everything. And so either way, whether it's an employee or outsourcing, you've got to be clear on what they're going to do first before you bring them in. So, Makrit. Yes, very much. Yeah. So, sorry, say again. Your comment on what I said about accountants with small businesses. Oh, yeah, and I totally agree with you. Yeah, if you, if you don't understand the business and how they work, then how can you help them? How can yeah. you identify their problems and solve their problems? Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I also agree with the outsourcing. I put it in the comments. Not sure if you saw it, yeah. But um, people, I agree with outsourcing. I, say, I always say like, Hire what you hate or what you procrastinate on. It's always a good sign to know that's what you must outsource. And um, bookkeeping and books is one of the first things in my experience that uh, entrepreneurs should look at outsourcing um, so that they can focus on building their business, in, in my opinion. 100%. So, 100%. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and Robert Kiyosaki, it, you, it, insist on that all the time and um and i and i think that's it's such an important aspect and i see way too many small to medium-sized businesses making that mistake doing their own books trying to do their own books on the weekends then it gets busy then you get to a time like december and it's all shut down go slow all that sort of stuff books don't get done then you start the new year you're behind then it creates frustrations and then how do i know that because i've been there I've been there, I've done it, I've had my wife do it, I've tried to do it, um, and, and at the end of the day, it creates complications, even if it's done well, when it comes to money issues, the one thing you argue about is money, so the great, best thing I ever did with my business is find a really great accountant, um, be clear on the expectation, and, and get them to do my bookkeeping and accounts, um, and between my wife and I, we focus on what we're good at doing, and that's growing our business, teaching, training, uh, you know, and uh, and expanding from there. Um, the same is with uh, with um, social media, yeah, those type of things. We outsource. That's not our that's not our um, our speciality. So you know, and and you've got to build your team as you go. And yes, it might cost you some money to start off with. You might not think you have the money. I just ask a really simple question. How am I going to afford it? Not I can't afford it. To me, too many. I, and I, this actually just really creates me. And, and it was it was another lesson that that comes out in this interview. Is neither of these guys said I can't afford it. They said how can I afford it? You know, tuft and needle. They started on six thousand dollars. That's what they had. They started up with six thousand dollars. They did a test. They put it on the website. They knew what they were trying to do. And they made one sale they were, and they started. They were in the game. $6,000. Then in a year, they did a million, then a hundred million. And this year, they're on tune to do 300 million uh, over, over in a period of time. But they started with six. Too many people are saying, I can't start because I have no money. But what they did is they took action and they, and they created the opportunity. What I think too many people are saying is what they want is they want that 1 million, 100 million business, and that's what they think of businesses. So that's the expectation of getting there. They're not prepared to do the one mattress sale and, uh, and start turning some money. So, so you know, part of, part of it is ask yourself the question, how can I get it done? How do I find the money? What do I, I'm just always asking myself, what do I need to flip and sell? If cash is tight, what do I need to sell? Who can I sell to? What can I find to sell? How do I generate the income so that I can create the cash flow to do what's needed to be done. You know, people like Marlon that are around me a lot, they understand that. And for a period of time, that drove Marlon batty because I was always on his case. Marlon, there's not, you know, a couple of months ago, I was on his case. Marlon, you just lost an opportunity to make 50,000 rand. And, uh, and one of the reasons, because he wasn't ready to sell. He wasn't thinking, how can I, you know, how do I make this work? What he was thinking was, I don't know enough about it already. Marlon, do you want to wage in on that? You remember that event? Yes, I, I do remember the event. 
but I wasn't exactly thinking that. <laughs> just, just to just you know make it a bit clear. But but no, yes, uh, I, my 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 mindset, because my mindset in that room was was about serving and 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 being there for for the the team, and and on, and I didn't open up to that to what was laid out in front of me. So the, my awareness dramatically grew in your room in terms of all the things that happened. And in terms of just, just in terms of, 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 you know, the opportunity that was right in front of me that you actually, you, you laid it out quite with a red carpet and everything. <laughs> so, so I totally missed it. And yeah, it's just about, it was a lack of awareness around it. Yeah. So, so part of that is, part of that is lack of awareness. Part, part of that is, is, is a focus on making money when money is available, isn't it? Right, right. I didn't even notice that the money was on the table, you know? So, yeah, big, big, it was a huge so, lesson. Though. Huge lesson. I'll set a little bit of context for you guys. I did a seminar. There was about 100 people in the room. Maybe, yeah, about 100 people in the room. And uh, Marlon had done some work for me. And while I was speaking, I created a product on the stage. And, uh, and I sold it for him. And... Uh, and, and I sold it with the opportunity of him to close it. But his mind wasn't in, his mind was in being in the room, surveying, doing what's needed to be done to make the event runs. And, and, and his, he, he didn't shift his mind from right, right now I'm serving to right now there's an opportunity, there's money on the table, how do, how do I close the deals? And one of the things about being an entrepreneur is, is you've got to always be looking, is opportunity, you know, one of my favorite sayings is opportunities come when they come, not when you want them or expect them. And that was a great example of that, wasn't that, Marlon? 100%. 100%. So you won't make that mistake again, will you? No. I, it, it actually opened my eyes up so much more because obviously subsequent events that we went to, my awareness in terms of where your movement was and what, whatever you were saying just seeped in a lot deeper. So, I mean, I'm, I'm now, <laughs> I'm aware and, 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 and I'll be able to pick up when, when the time is to, to, to actually move and when, when that opportunity actually is available. So big time. Excellent. Now, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't irritated or annoyed about the missed opportunity, was I? No. But we used it as a, as a valuable learning experience, didn't we? 100%. We debriefed it. We talked about it. We went back, and that was the deal. So, uh, you know, so so there's the question is when you when when you need stuff, can you ask the question, how do I make it happen? How do I make it happen? What do I need to do? Gunter, you've got up your hand. Would you like to comment something? Just unmute yourself if you'd like no. to. Sorry, no. Uh, uh, obviously, clicked the hand earlier and it stayed on. Oh, okay. <laughs> no problem cool so um okay good so the other key things that i picked up out of this was um was one is with tufton needle they're very clear about their language the language that they went out to the market was pretty simple are you tired of greedy mattress sales people so they went after the pain of people getting ripped off they were very clear on that and uh, so very clear on the language that, uh, that they went to their market for. Now, so many people would be too scared to do that. Just, you know, the fear of offending people. What they did is, is they had created something. They knew that that was the problem that they solved. And they went after that. Okay. The other one was this. And those of you that have been in business for any period longer than about a week, you will know that there's obstacles and roadblocks. A key thing is, is they kept going. Did the obstacles arrive? Yes. Did the roadblocks arrive? Yes. But they just kept going, pushing themselves through, pushing themselves through, pushing themselves through. You know, they, they went in knowing that it wasn't going to be easy, but they went in only knowing what they knew. So, you know, Kim, Kim said this in the podcast, one of the most important things for entrepreneurs is resilience and persistence. You've got to be resilient and you've got to be persistent. Too many startups, too many entrepreneurs, too many small business owners quit too fast because they have unrealistic expectations of the results that they're going to get and they have unrealistic expectations of how hard it's going to be. They think they're going to create way more 
in a far shorter time without any problems. You gotta go the other way around. You gotta be prepared. There are gonna be some big, flipping, stinking, nasty problems, and your results are gonna be way worse than what you expected in the short term. And if you can't get your mind right and push through those problems, you're gonna quit. So both of these guys, they had problems. Both of them had big problems. They had pushed through them. They, they had resilience and they persisted. They surrounded themselves with people who encouraged them and built them up, not, not broke them down. So, and you know, Robert then finished off and said this, the bigger you get in your business, the bigger the problems come. So the bigger the problems come, the bigger you have to be in order to be able to push through those problems. That's why most small S quadrant people, most SMEs stay small and don't go big because they can't grow themselves big enough to be able to grow through those problems and, uh, and have the resilience to, uh, to, move, to move through. So any comments or questions on, on tonight? Barry? Yeah. Continue. What I've noticed with a lot of entrepreneurs is that they are so focused on their own thing that they are not seeing the bigger picture. To me, entrepreneurs should be looking for other entrepreneurs that they can link up with. In other words, you know, the power becomes so much more when you have 20 people looking out for business for you. Yeah, so, so I think creating leverage, many entrepreneurs get, well, so, so why do you think entrepreneurs get stuck in this, uh, it's, it's all about me? Yeah, well, I think they've got the small business mindset. They're not looking at scaling really when they start. Yeah. So they're not, they're not thinking outside the box. They're just focused on what they're doing. Okay, I have a very simple explanation for that. They went to school. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And, and the reality is this, is, is at school, at, the longer you stay at school, the longer you stay in educational institutions, the more you are taught to play by yourself, the more you're taught that you are the one, that you've got to do everything yourself. So what I observe with a lot of people, especially people that get fairly high educational qualifications, they are more and more stuck into them being the specialist, them being the brains, them knowing everything, that they struggle to move beyond themselves. And, and, that, and that's because school doesn't teach you to play on a team. School teaches you to play by yourself. Whereas when you look at some of the real success stories of entrepreneurs, uh, numbers of them failed school, got kicked out, and they, had, they went out with literally nothing, and they had to learn how to connect with other people, leverage, create something bigger than themselves, by working with other people in order to create success. Absolutely, absolutely. So you're right. Business and and uh, and you know, I say this often. I've heard this from Robert often. Business is a team sport. The problem is, is most people try play it alone. And the hardest part of business is a team sport. You know, in this podcast, they they, they that's what both guys said. They said one of the hardest parts is when they had to employ people, bring in people. Yeah. Because, you know, you can control you can control things like, to a large degree, your ovens, your bread, if you're running a restaurant, you know, your manufacturing facility. But as soon as you put people in the fray, that's where the control struggles. And the little voice with a lot of, with a lot of small entrepreneurs is one, they lack trust. So they think someone's going to screw them. Well, uh, those entrepreneurs that lack trust, they need to they need to check into that themselves on where on where they are breaking trust, and uh, so that's the one. The other thing is um, is they're scared that if they bring someone on or they partner with someone or they link with somebody else, that things like people are going to steal their ideas or people are going to do them in or people are not going to work. And they well, that's that's going to happen with the whether you like it or not as you start bringing in people. So, yeah, I love that comment is you've you got to, you got to be, be prepared to work, connect with people and expand beyond, beyond yourself. Excellent. Thank you for that. So anyone else, any other comments or questions? Let's have a look here. Uh, um, Barry, can I say something? 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I agree and I want to share something that happened today. So I totally agree, by letting go, you let your business grow. And that I've learned as well, by leveraging of other people and building your team. Because I've one of my contractors that I've employed recently went to see one of my clients today and she had an awesome meeting with her and then they talked about project management and now she can help her on project management. So it opened the door for her as well. So that was like a huge win for me. I was like so happy for her as well. So by helping me, by helping her, yeah, it's like everyone is now helped. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so that was, I, it was very exciting. I, I like those words that you said. By letting go, you allow your business to grow. Now, for many yeah. small entrepreneurs, what comes up is the fear of not being in control. In fact, honestly, for many large entrepreneurs, that's one of the reasons why many large entrepreneurs often can't build a team, build a really big team, is because of the fear of not being in control. The reality is this: you're never really in control. You know, when I was in the corporate world running sales teams, I was never in control. I thought I was. I had an ego. I was the sales director. Of course, I was in control. No, I wasn't. As soon as they left the building, they were in control. If I knew what I knew today, my life would have been a lot less stressful. I would have had a lot more hair. And so today, I just, I just understand this. I bring people onto the team. I have to trust that they're going to do what they say they're going to do. I expect that very often they're not going to do what they say they're going to do. And we, and we work through it. But I do know this. I'm not in control of Mullen. Mullen will tell me that he's going to do something, and if he doesn't do it, I'm not in control. The only thing that I can do is work through that process of um, work, work through that process of working with Mullen, so that we get more and more and more online, and we are either going to work well together as a team, or we're going to part ways. So, but I can't control it. What I can do is I can put the right context, so I attract the right people, and over a period of time. I found that the right people stay around and the, and the right people want to do the right things. And, and, that, and that's the deal. But I have less control over, yeah. So funny, enough, I have way more control in my business than I had five years ago, but I'm less in control of it, if that makes any sense. And the fear is with many small, uh, with medium sized people is they think they've got to control everything. You know, it's this micromanage thing that comes out of, the corporate world, you know, I gotta, I gotta control everything. So, so that's, um, you know, that that for me is yes, no. is is key. So thank you for that, Macri. Great comment. Um, cool. Mm -hmm. So Thanks. from let's have a look here. So from Raymond. Uh, good evening, Barry and everyone. I'm struggling to find someone decent to do my website and my social media marketing. Where who can I talk to? Uh, Raymond. There's Marlon, he runs all my social media websites, all that sort of stuff. Uh, what I suggest is send Marlon a message. Uh, Marlon, do you, Marlon, just uh, type in your details so Raymond can see them. Raymond, what I would suggest is hook up with Marlon. If he's the right guy, if you connect with him, great. Otherwise, he'll put you on to somebody who can, uh, who can help you. But he handles all all my stuff for me. Just be clear a little bit on what you want and uh, and and what you expect uh, when you meet with them. Does, does that help, Raymond? Cool, folks. Any any other questions or comments before we finish off? Um, it does not have to be related to what we talked about tonight. It can be anything else. Uh, we'll have a little bit of uh, five minutes or so of open, of open line, open questions. Uh, anything, anything you would, you like help on? Or, matter of fact, any comments from those of you that listen to the podcast around maybe what you learned, one or two things that you learned that we could discuss. Okay, there we go, Raymond from Marlon, Marlon and Uncovering Greatness. Co. Za. Okay, so now that's interesting. Marlon is part of the Uncovering Greatness team. He has an Uncovering Greatness, uh, an Uncovering Greatness email address. Uh, he is in our environment. So can you see how he leverages our brand, but he works for himself and runs his own business. So, you know, if I didn't tell you that, no one would know. And they would just think that he was part of my team, employed team. Correct. 
Any other any any other questions or comments? Marlon, you want to say something? No, it's just, it's just saying correct. Yeah, that's right. Um, well, the brand, <laughs> the brand, and and, and the, the team first. It's always the team first, and yeah. So so we. Well, mission, mission first, isn't mission, it? Mission first, and the team. So so that. Mission first, team second. And you and me last. Yep, hundred percent. Individual love. Hundred percent. That's why Marlin fits into our team because mo most people, many people, don't operate like that. They operate the other way around. Individual first, team second, mission last. That's not the way we work. Cool. So Raymond and Marlin, excellent. Anyone else? Any other comments or questions? Have you guys got value tonight? You enjoyed tonight's session? If you did, just give us a hand raise. Let us know that you got value. There, I do have a question just for everybody that did manage to make it on. I, I saw Karun, you mentioned, and it's more like a, 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 a more of an administrative thing, especially considering that it's the first time that we use this version. Um, did, can everybody see Barry right now? Well, maybe not. There's no, because I mean, uh, it's, so are you looking at a, are you all looking at a black screen? Because it's it's interesting. So Raymond, Raymond can see me. My screen is up. Okay, it's it's strange. I'll just have to make sure next time that 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 I'm setting you up correctly as a host. Yeah, thank you, Mahit. So I I I um yeah, I just needed to set it up for next time better. Um, did everybody log on easily enough? The link came through, and that did you get the link for the web, for the podcast? I just want to make sure because ah, I think your view button. Thank you, Raymond. So Raymond's saying that you should actually look for the. If I understand you correctly, Raymond, you must actually look for for Barry. But next time we we'll, we'll make sure that Barry is 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 front and center. Um, and, and, and next time we would be able to, if anybody wanted to open up their cameras, we would be able to see you and kind of have it like uh, a meeting, but it will be a different, a whole, we'll have a whole lot of different controls on Barry. So excuse me, I just Thanks, want to. So, I just up. need to make a comment to Yvonne. Yvonne, that's not a halo, that's my bald spot. <laughs> and, uh, so thank you for, uh, I just needed to clarify that. And so, yeah, the, the um, yeah, so I just, I want to thank you guys for coming on tonight. Uh, I want to wish you an amazing, amazing Christmas holiday season. May you be blessed. May you be safe. Next year, 2019 is going to be an unbelievable year. And uh, I want to leave you with one thought. Before I met, I, I met with Robert last Monday for lunch before we did the event on Monday evening. And Robert asked me one question right up front. He said, Barry, are you prepared to fail tonight? That was the first question. My answer was, hell yes. The question I'm going to ask you, and whatever you're pursuing right now, are you prepared to fail? Because failure is going to happen. It's either going to work or it's not. And you get up, you learn, and you move on. And uh, I just believe that 2019 could be an amazing year for everybody. I want to thank you all for... Uh, being in our world this year, I um, I look forward to look forward to uh, having you in our world next year. To being able to work with you, serve you, help you grow your businesses, and uh, and really uh, work with you to be part of changing this amazing country of ours and uh, and this amazing continent. Because really, building entrepreneurs is, is what we need to do. So I want to thank you, Yvonne. Yes, our webinars will continue next year. So, um, so looking forward to see you guys then. Be blessed. Have uh, have an incredible, incredible week. Have an incredible festive season. Great Christmas, and uh, and we'll see you guys all soon. Thanks very much. Thanks, Marlon. Back to you. Thank you, Barry. Always insightful and great reminders as always. Guys, have a blessed Christmas and end of year. Wish you all the best. Um, what I'm, what we, what we're going to do is, I think we're, over the next two days we will be sending out pretty much all the links for all the webinars that we've done throughout the year. 
So you can go back and peruse maybe during your holiday time if you want to. Um, the other thing that we will be also doing is kind of taking sound bites of this and creating uh, our own podcast, our own Uncovering Greatness podcast version. So feel free to, I'll let you guys know about that as well, um, probably through the email or something like that. So have a, have a blessed evening, have a blessed Christmas and, and end of year, and we'll see you guys all next year. Bye. Yes, even, yes, Yvonne, definitely. Um, even if you're not part of the previous ones, definitely. As long as you're part of this list, we will, we will send it all to you. Excellent. Cheers, guys. Thank you.